This is Zotero. So what if you had a magic button to create bibliographic information and grab citations? What if you could also annotate, attach files, and relate these citations in an easy folder hierarchy? What if you could take that rich library of citations and drop them magically into word processors and change citation styles instantly? What if the more you used it, the more powerful it became, allowing you to reconceptualize your ideas and even share all of this with collaborators? That's Zotero. Getting set up is easy. You go to Zotero.org and you go ahead and click this register button. Once here, you'll select a username, tell them your email, pick a password. They'll send you a registration confirmation. Go ahead and accept that. Once you've registered, go back to the main page, click on download now. Now I'm going to recommend that you download the Zotero standalone. This also comes as a plugin for Firefox, but if you download the standalone, it'll automatically come with Word and LibreOffice integration. You'll have to download the extension as well. So once you download and install, make sure you select the appropriate browser extension, get that set up, and then you can open up Zotero. This is what it looks like, though it should be empty for you. The last step before being able to use Zotero is to open the preferences by selecting the gear tool and opening preferences and clicking on this sync tab. You want to make sure that your username that you registered with on Zotero.org and your password are entered into here and you're syncing automatically, syncing the full text content. There are other features that you can explore within the preferences tab, such as font size. The way Zotero works is that you collect bibliographic information from the web. So what it does is it, has to, it uses translators to sense bibliographic information on a site. So, for example, if we go to WorldCat and we look for a book, one of my favorite books by Thomas Grew, we see here that in the upper right-hand corner of our browser, a little button has appeared. If we click on this button, it'll save that citation to our Zotero library. And here we see then the folder that I was currently in, the citation has been created. Now this doesn't just work for a site like WorldCat, but it also use, it also works for many library catalogs, all kinds of different electronic databases, searching for sources, even sites like the New York Times. So it grabs information from the web itself and populates that information onto a new citation within Zotero. Even if a site does not have a translator, let's say like a foreign newspaper website, you can even right click anywhere on the page and save a Zotero snapshot from the current page. What happens there is that it saves the item within Zotero and it includes an actual snapshot of the current page that is stored locally on your computer so you don't lose it, say if the link goes dead. This is also a great way to edit the bibliographic information that it has pulled and update it with the author, the date, things that didn't come in with the translator because it didn't exist. Now, if you need to create a citation for something that's not on the web, say like an original primary source, then you also have this green button where you can manually create any number of kinds of sources. So let's say I find a document in an archive that I'd like to create a citation for. By item type, it allows me to enter different kinds of metadata into the different fields. So let's say I found a document. I can fill this out in a fairly straightforward way. But if I find a, let's say, a film in the archive, the kinds of things that you can attach as metadata change dependent on the item type. Once you start to build a library of citations, you'll want to organize those citations within folder structures. You see here that I have fairly obvious folders, say like one for a dissertation, that is split up into smaller folders, say by chapter, into even smaller subfolders by primary or secondary sources. You are free to organize your citations however you like. You can have them exist in different folders. The folders also work in such a way that the top, very top folder doesn't necessarily display everything that is in the folders containing it, as we see that primary and building 
has sources in it, yet the wider dissertation doesn't list any sources within it. Once you have a number of items and they're well organized, you'll want to start interacting with these four tabs that you see whenever you click on a citation. Beyond the information about that citation, you also have notes, tags, and related. Notes are ways to annotate sources. So here if I click on this note, you'll see it's actually attached and lives within the citation itself. It's a way for me to have some brief information, this one's particularly long, of what is in the source itself or notes about this source, whatever you want. They can be multiple and they work with HTML functionality. Next is tabs. And you can add tabs, tags, to the sources that you have in your library, depending on how you want to organize them. You can even color code tags a color to that specific tab. And so all of the things that are tagged as MYBs now have the red color code next to the citation. It's an easy way to visually organize things that might be a little harder to see if there's many, many tags functioning at the same time. Finally, you have related items, which in this case, you can see that this particular source discusses another source I have elsewhere in the library, which I can then navigate to, you see this has been selected as related and it's immediately above. Another powerful feature of Zotero is its integration with word processors. If I want to add a citation, I can go up to this little scroll menu here to Zotero and then add a citation. First it's going to ask, since it's the first time I'm putting something into this document, what kind of style I would like to cite in. We see, we see, uh, common AMA, APA styles. I'm going to ch choose Chicago. And then here you see something like a spotlight search. So if I look for my previous book, Sagru, I can find that there. I always like to actually go to the classic view, and that way I can browse a little bit around what might else be coming up in the search, things that I forgot. And I can search within specific folders as there you saw, I didn't find it because I was, lo was not looking at the widest level. And I can also insert the page number on the fly. If I would like to cite multiple sources, you can select the first one and then select another one. Hit OK, and then we see that Word has created a footnote. And if we scroll down, we see the footnotes in the document. I've added a number of other citations, and I'm finished with my paper. So I'll add a Works Cited section, and I'll go back up to my scroll, and I will add a bibliography. And what has actually happened is Zotero has sensed exactly what I cited in the paper, and on its own come up with a bibliography following the style convention that I selected. Now, it bears reminding that all the citations and the way that they are populated within a word processor are dependent upon how those citations exist within the client itself. So it's always a good idea to double check the work that is happening on the client side. So are dates correct? Are publishers correct? Is it in the right place? All these things are what the client is drawing from. So it's only as smart as the work that you've checked that exists with inside the client. One of the most exciting features of Zotero is that it synchronizes the data that you have in your local client with some cloud storage that's available to you with the username that you that you uh, or registered with on Zotero.org. Now it only comes with 300 megabytes of free space, which is actually quite a bit if you're not adding large files, attaching large files to your citations. But you can also buy more storage for a reasonable price, or you can store, let's say, a big file if this PDF were quite large, I could host this on, say, Dropbox and then add a URL to the citation to remind me where I've put the actual file. One final useful feature is the ability to collaborate with others. You see here that there are group libraries. This is a group library that I used for a collaborative project where I was able to upload sources specific to the project from my general library here 
simply by dragging and dropping them into the group library. This group library had an ownership uh, on, on my behalf I was administering that I then invited other Zotero usernames to participate on and you can control levels of access to viewing or editing capabilities. But we could all update, make changes to a group library and then use all of Zotero's functionality as a group within one project.